What's up guys, Mason the Brock Anderson here, and this is NCIS Season 19, Episode 13, The Helpers. So this one, in theory, is not a bad episode. You know, you've got Jimmy and Casey have been, I mean, honestly, in a lot of different sticky situations that they've had to get out of. So putting them in danger again, having Jimmy's daughter involved, it's not a bad idea. And even the idea of the Raven, you know, this new enemy that they don't catch at the end of this episode and seems to be very elusive. I like that idea. The execution, though, was really bad. And unfortunately, some of it had to do with, in my opinion, some lackluster acting in this episode. I don't know. I mean, not everybody was bad. Some people, I thought Jimmy and Casey, after the initial part of it, like the, the opening scenes with them and some of the, the early moments whenever they're getting all extra frustrated because of the, the toxin and stuff, some of those scenes didn't feel very convincing, but by the end of it, I thought they both pulled it through pretty well. I think most of the team did fine as far as expressing their concern and desperation to to figure out how to save them. But yeah, Jimmy's daughter. Um, I know she's young, so I'm not going to hold it super against her, but man, it was it was pretty bad, especially some of the later scenes when she had to really be emotional and the music is swelling and Jimmy is acting his ass off and it just cuts to her and she's supposed to look and sound sad. <laughs> she doesn't. <laughs> she really didn't. I, I mean, I know some of it is she's supposed to be a bit more mature. So yeah, the idea of losing her dad is maybe something that she's able to handle a bit better than most kids her age, but I don't know. I still feel like shed a tear. Maybe don't have a half smirk on. <laughs> At least that would, that's what it looked like watching her. It just wasn't good. And again, I know she's young, so can't really sit here and say, oh, she should be a masterclass actor. But there are a lot of good younger actors out there. So to get somebody who is not, not only is going to be probably a character going forward, but the daughter of one of the team, you kind of expect you're going to see her a little bit more often. You probably want to get a young actor who is going to be able to hold their own and who's going to be able to at least deliver a convincing performance. And I was just not convinced by her throughout the entirety of the episode. I mean, it started very early on with the, the playful shove she gives Torres right, right off the bat. It's one of those that, you know, she maybe she's just been on stage a lot. And so you go really over the top with the push, you know, to really emphasize what you're doing for the people in the back row but this is tv you know you're on camera it's a lot more close up you don't have to be as over dramatic with your motions but that's the feeling that i got is she was really emphasizing a lot of her stuff but in the smaller moments in the the facial expressions i don't feel like she was really bringing it and it it harmed a lot of this episode unfortunately also the Dr. Carol, I think her name is. I know she's been on the show before. She looks vaguely familiar. I don't remember when, but I'm, McGee and Jimmy were both talking to her like they knew her. So she has been on the show before. I'm like 95% certain. But I don't know. Has she only ever been on in like comedic episodes? Because <laughs> I'm going to be honest, she didn't really... She sounded more like she she would work in a comedy based episode. Like her delivery, it sound it sounded like somebody who'd be better at delivering comedic lines rather than I need to deliver the super emotional, super powerful lines. You know, I need to tell you how it is. I'm so sorry, you know, that I lied to you earlier, but I needed you to stay calm. I needed you guys to it, it didn't sound like she was really committed to what she was saying. It was Basically, I'm sorry that I lied to you guys earlier, but I needed you to, to listen to me and I need you guys to calm yourselves down because if your heart rate got too high, then it would be bad for you. It, it, it was very much like that. It was just reading off lines is what it sounded like. So I, I don't know. I was a little disappointed because, again, I, I, she was a character that I was pretty sure I'd seen before on this show. I don't remember when, but I was kind of like, OK, cool. They're bringing somebody back. It's somebody McGee seems to know. This is cool. And then she shows up and I was not convinced by her at all. And those 
Victoria and Carol were two of the biggest characters outside of Jimmy and Casey in this episode, and neither of them, I thought, really brought the emotional struggle that this episode seemed to have. So pretty disappointing overall, especially considering the setup and the idea, the outline for this episode was really interesting. And it was something, you know, I, I think with, with the Raven, I'm excited to see more you know, about this character and see what they're trying to do, what their plans are. But unfortunately, there wasn't enough there of that. In fact, we didn't even really learn. Obviously, we know that they're, whoever it is, is trying to stir up these conspiracy theories, you know, basically trying to take out an attack on the government by hiring, convincing all these people to do their bidding. So it's very much a almost like building up a cult, which I think is kind of interesting. But that's about all we learned. We didn't really get any more information outside of that. I don't even think we really have any suspects at the moment. So I, I don't know. It, it, it's again, the idea is there. The execution, unfortunately, was not. So disappointing in that respect, but uh, it is what it is. Again, I mean, I, I'm not coming into NCIs expecting everybody to hit the bullseye with their acting, but when you bring in two characters that are either related to the team or known by the team, you would expect them to come in and bring their A game, you know, to be actors that are able to hold their own, be able to, to really bring their A game and com not compete, but I guess complement the, the rest of the team. Cause I mean, obviously the, the whole of the team, they're all good actors. You know, we've seen plenty of good acting from all of them. So you want these side characters that come in you, know, you think about your, your Brianna's, your Delilah's, you know, those characters that we've seen in multiple episodes that are somehow related to the main characters, whenever they come in, they always seem to come in and do their jobs well. You know, it doesn't feel like there's a downgrade at all. But yeah, Victoria and Carol, unfortunately, were both pretty bad downgrades, uh, unfortunately. Also, there was the one guy, I don't remember his name, but I've seen him in a lot of... I feel like I remember seeing him in, like, Disney Channel shows. Like, he's got the, the blonde hair. I feel like he was in Sweet Life of Zack and Cody at some point. Um, but... They had him as the one that he was working with, like the, the doctor that was creating the, the toxins and the antidotes. His whole character was essentially, oh yeah, uh, this one guy who was a, a dangerous chemist. We have him working for us and apparently he's disappeared and we didn't think to inform anybody. That was a little extra stupid and it's something that just sort of gets glossed over like, Oh, okay. Yeah. We'll look and we'll let you know what happened. Like, no, you guys uh, didn't report this. <laughs> Why? So that was also pretty stupid as well. But anyways, with all that being said, unfortunately it's not a great first episode back because it has been about a week and a half since I've watched anything from NCIS. So I was hoping to come back and maybe be entertained. And this first episode was not a good start. So we'll see where it goes from here. That, all that being said, though, not unfortunately a great episode back because it has been a week and a half since I've watched in the NCIS. So I was hoping to come back and be entertained and be excited to watch more. But yeah, not after this. So we'll see what the next one holds. But with that being said, on to the next episode. I'll see you there in a minute. And now episode 14, First Steps. More like a uh, first nepotism. <laughs> I wasn't a fan of that one, which is the best I could come up with. But no, this one wasn't good. Uh, it's, I feel like I've seen this story done before. It's, it's every, you've got the, the daughter of a leader or a commander or a person in charge coming in to be a part of the team. And it, it, it plays out very similar almost every single time. You know, you've got her showing that she's not capable of being an agent. You've got the whole, oh, it, I'm sure it's going to be an easy case, which means it's going to be super complicated and very intense. She basically puts herself in danger. She shows she's not capable of being in the field yet. She basically has to be rescued and saved. And she, she manages to talk one guy down. And at the end of it all, oh, you're on your way to being a great NCIS agent. You're going to be fantastic. You did a great job today. What? <laughs> I don't understand. I, I, what I want to consider is the felicity treatment. Because honestly, any time a character basically screws up or has 
has an idea of what to do that is wrong or fails at every turn, but everybody acts like they're just the most amazing thing ever and that they did a fantastic job even though they did not, it's the Felicity treatment. Because that's the same type of treatment she got on Arrow. Even though all of her ideas were wrong, even though every time they tried to do it her way, they failed. At the end of the episode, it's, oh, Felicity, you were right. That's what it feels like. She, she got herself kidnapped. She didn't follow orders. She basically put herself in harm's way. She made it super easy for them to figure out, oh, why did she lie about her name? Hmm, let me look this up. You know, like, <laughs> she put herself in such danger and had to be rescued. The only good thing she did was she talked down a guy and managed to convince him to turn himself in, which honestly was not that hard because he had a daughter that he didn't want to leave on her own. How easy is that? Hey, think about your daughter. I, I could do that. And I'm not trained in any sort of negotiating tactics. So to claim that that was enough for her to be like, oh, you did a great job. That No, she didn't. She... First of all, didn't follow orders when Taurus told her what to do. Yeah, it may have been an asinine order in his mind, but it doesn't matter. They told you to stay in the car, you stay in the car. And you didn't do that. And then they give you a second chance, you go off on your own. And even though both of them are off or away from you, you still decide to go in between some cars out of sight and you get yourself kidnapped for it. Here's an idea. Why don't you stay away from the cars so that way nobody can jump you? If you know he's hiding somewhere amongst the cars, going in between them is the perfect way to get jumped and kidnapped. And that's what happens. And yet, in spite of all of this, oh no, she did a great job today. It's so stupid. She was annoying. She was the, the young, spunky, oh, I know what's best for me. You can't tell me what to do, dad. And Vance, sure enough, was the typical, oh, you know what? I was hard on her earlier, but it's because I care about her. Now I realize I just need to let her do what she wants to do. It, it, I swear, whoever writes these shows, whoever writes these stories, I almost always feel like it's some younger person who's just rebelling and wants their parents to know, hey, you can't control me. Even though most of the time, parents do typically know what they're talking about. In this situation, Vance is totally right. She's not ready for the field. Like, yes, she eventually has to get out there and be in the field at some point, but she's not ready right now. She has showed in this episode she's not ready for the field. And by the end of it, no, she was right the whole time. She needs to, she needs to get out there and spread her wings. Yeah, and get herself kidnapped again, maybe killed next time, because, I mean, she even basically put a bullet in her head. And she was like, I don't know anything. And the guy was like, okay, well, you don't know anything. You're useless to us now. Like, exactly. <laughs> you could have given them something. Try to keep yourself alive. Try to give some information to wh whoever is watching. I mean, obviously, I know she she was gagged, so it's not like she could speak during the video. But I don't know, blink Morse code or something. You have to have some way to communicate with everybody, but she doesn't. She doesn't do a damn thing until the end. After they've already rescued her, all she has to do is tell a guy, hey, don't leave your daughter fatherless. And that's all she did so it was a really bad episode the whole tie-in with the mob and all of that i guess was kind of interesting but i still i don't know it it felt more like we need to add an element of danger into this so we're just going to throw in the mob or i don't know if they're a mob or a gang or whatever but it just it felt like we need to add this super element of danger so yeah this this cartel, this gang, we're, we're throwing this in there and now she's in real danger, but she's still going to save the day and she's going to be the hero, <laughs> even though, again, she really wasn't. She didn't really do anything. So, yeah, it, it was just a very frustrating episode when it first started and when the whole idea of her helping out being involved was introduced. I was not looking forward to it. And as it continued to play out, it just felt more and more like, yeah, this this is exactly what I expect. This story, this the way the characters are acting, the way they're treating Vance's daughter, this is exactly what I expect from them. It is very much a, oh, we're, we're going to handle her with kid gloves because we don't want to hurt the director's daughter. And then finally, okay, kid gloves are off. Go out there into the field. And then she screws up. And at the end of it, oh, you did such a good job today. I hate this. <laughs> I hate this story. It's annoying and it's very poorly written. 
<sighs> Time to move on to the next episode. Oh, I'll see you there in just a minute. And now episode 15, Thick as Thieves. So this one was okay. It was fun to see a little bit more about Parker's backstory and where he came from as a kid and all of that. I will say it was, it was not only predictable, it was predictable in the sense of I can't believe the characters didn't figure it out sooner. Because the thing is, they had the video, right? They had the video of what the, the petty officer was recording when she was looking for the possums and such. And yeah, it's dark. Yeah, you can't see a whole lot, but you can hear the voice of the guy who shot both Sean and the petty officer. You hear the voice and it sounds higher pitch and you can see at least the outline of the guy. He seems a little bit skinnier. So in my mind, I never saw Billy as a possible shooter in this sense. I never saw him as the possible bad guy for this episode. And I guess if I, if I hadn't seen the video, if the video hadn't made it so obvious, maybe I would have suspected that he would be sort of the red herring but because of the video i mean i I never had that in my mind like in, in no way did i think billy was at all connected to this and especially the intensity with which he was going after trying to find who was responsible yeah it could have all been an act but it felt very genuine so it just it's weird to me that all of that after the video after all of billy's actions that was the logical conclusion for the team and it, it took Billy finding out who the true killer was for them to realize what happened. To me, that it makes the team look dumb. It even makes Parker look kind of dumb, which I think is a little ridiculous. Because again, you watch that video, you can clearly hear the other guy talking. <laughs> you can hear his voice, and it's not Billy's voice. It's very clearly not his. It sounds much higher pitch. Now... I don't know why my mind didn't instantly, instantly go to Colin. I did think it was weird that he was introduced early on and just kind of ignored for the rest of the episode. Like that's one of the telltale signs of a, uh, one of the villains of an NCIS episode, <laughs> somebody who hardly gets any attention throughout the episode. And at the end, Oh, they're the ones that did it. So I don't know. Cause he was the one that you know had the baseball card. So does that mean that he was a part of the group that robbed? Like he was working with a girl with a tattoo? Because it it felt very sudden to bring up that connection. That, oh yeah, he's the one that did it. He's the one that robbed the store and that's why Sean was about to turn him in. Like it just, it felt like they wanted to have it all be connected, but it feels weird that the girl was talking about her crew and yet we didn't get any names, we didn't get any sort of sense of who she could possibly be working with. And so to find out, oh yeah, Colin was apparently a part of that crew, I felt like it was a little out of left field, in my opinion. But no, the biggest, I mean, the biggest problem for me, for sure, was just the fact that Billy was not even, not even on top 10 of my list of who could have possibly done it. And so the fact that the team even thought that that was a possibility, it just makes them look really stupid. And again, this is not coming from the mindset of, oh, I know how these shows work and I know the formula and that's how I was able to figure it out. This was just based on the clues that they gave us, the video that they gave us. You're going to tell me you looked at that and thought, yeah, that, that hooded figure could be Billy. That kind of sounds like it might be an older guy, even though it sounded like a kid. And it's a much skinnier frame, much slenderer looking frame surely that could be billy who's much stockier right like that makes sense so yeah i i just felt like that was really dumb then the whole thing with knight and her looking for a plus one i don't know if this is supposed to be like a blossoming romance between her and jimmy if so uh, i mean i i guess i haven't seen them interact enough to really know if this is gonna work because the thing is you think about tony and ziva you think about Nick and Ellie. I think what made those, again, I wasn't a big fan of Nick and Ellie, but what made them work is we got to see them interact a lot. We got to see how they played off of each other. We got to see how they connected, how they talked. And so we could see how, you know, maybe a romance could blossom out of this. But with, I mean, with Jess and Jimmy, we never see them talk really. We hardly ever see them interact 
and then just all of a sudden it's like oh she's looking for a plus one and jimmy is her last option and was it because there was slight feelings there and she didn't want to make it awkward or is he just that low on her list that she even thought about maybe taking parker before she took jimmy i don't know but it just it doesn't feel like this this is a, a romance that i'm on board for this feels just very random this feels like you know what jimmy lost brina jess we don't i don't think she's had any guys in her life since she joined the team but we don't obviously we don't want to put nick and jess together because nick is still kind of broken up about ellie and we've already done this cliche of the the badass handsome looking one of the group and then the girl of the group in the team that goes out in the field they get together happened with tony and ziva happened with nick and ellie so it's kind of like we're not going to put nick and jess together so let's put jess with somebody else that works at the office why <laughs> You know, if you're going to give her somebody to hook up with, why does it have to be somebody in the office? And again, why Jimmy? What, what, it, what about them works together as a couple? Because I've not really seen any of that. So I don't know if that's what they're going for. It just felt like a very random story that, eh, again, just, well, we got to pull something out of our ass. So Jess and Jimmy, they share the first letter of their names. Let's see if that works. No, but anyways, yeah, over these three episodes, it's definitely not brought down my interest. Because again, I feel like my interest for the season was not very high to begin with. And it's kind of fluctuated. You know, there have been some episodes that have made me go, okay, yeah, NCIS is back. I, I'm enjoying myself again. And then there have been some that made me go, okay, so yeah, the writing team still has no idea what they're doing. <laughs> cool. So I, I don't know. I mean, it's season 19, I guess. My expectations should definitely not be that high right now, but even with my expectations being lowered, it still feels like sometimes the writing team just really drops the ball. And in ways that if you use half a brain cell, if you think about it for more than half a second, again, you show that videotape, it should clearly say, first of all, don't have the guy speak at all. And then have it be so dark that you can't even make out the shape of the figures. You know, maybe you can see Sean and you could see the guy hit Sean and then the girl turns to run and that's when she gets shot from behind. So maybe that's how you do it. So we don't actually see who killed the girl. So maybe then Billy could be a possible red herring. But when you show, when you let us hear the voice of the guy and then you show at least the outline of him, it's going to let us know and it's going to let the characters know, or it should, that it's definitely not Billy. Like there's no way it could possibly be Billy because. He doesn't sound like him. He doesn't look like him. So it just, it feels like there are too many moments in that sense of this is stupid. This is just bad writing. This is, we didn't think about it hardly at all. We just sort of threw it out there and said, here, maybe this makes sense. And I'm just disappointed in that. I'm, I'm disappointed that they couldn't put just a little bit more effort. Just, just try a little bit more to make it make sense. Also, something that just popped into my head, because I actually looked it up just to see what is the distance between dc and philadelphia and somebody actually made a, a reddit thread about it <laughs> because I, I mean i don't get this reference but it said that apparently parker has game of thrones level fast travel because it's 148 miles that he had to travel there and back and <laughs> billy had to travel to dc to meet up with jimmy at the the diner which how did he even know jimmy was going to be at the diner how did he know who Jimmy was, you know, it's just, there's a lot of, if you're going to set it in a completely different city, you can't just have characters go back and forth consistently in, in a single day too. So I don't know. There's a lot of weird little things that again, if you just think about it for a little bit, it doesn't make any sense. And that's disappointing that you, I mean, and maybe the whole writing team has changed at this point, probably has swapped in and out, but how did nobody in the room raise their hand and go, this doesn't make sense. Yeah. It just, it feels like they don't care. And that's disappointing to me. But anyways, with all that being said, that's it for me. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What were your thoughts on these three episodes? Let me know. We can talk about and discuss all that good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe future NCIS reviews. And until next time, I hope you guys have a great day and I'll talk to you all later. Peace out.